Four countries have secured their place in this summer's Olympic baseball tournament. Only two spots remain, and one of them will be taken next week. The Baseball Americas qualifier begins on Monday, May 31st in Florida. Eight countries will be split into two groups. Group A consists of the USA, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and Nicaragua. Group B has Cuba, Venezuela, Canada, and Colombia. Each group plays three days of round robin from Monday to Wednesday. The top two teams from each group will advance to the Super Round on Friday and Saturday, where they will play the two teams from the other group. Head-to-head -head results from group play carry over to the Super Round. The team with the best record in the Super Round will be the fifth team to qualify for the Olympics, joining Japan, Korea, Mexico, and Israel. The second and third place teams will have another chance at the final Olympic qualifier to be held in Mexico from the 16th to the 20th of June, so only one team from the Super Round will truly be eliminated. Two venues will be used for this event. One is Clover Park in Port St. Lucie. This 7,000-seat stadium is the New York Mets' spring training home, and also home to the Mets' low single-A and rookie league teams. The other one is the ballpark of the Palm Beaches in West Palm Beach, also holding 7,000 fans, and home to the Houston Astros and Washington Nationals spring training, and the rookie league teams for both organizations. Here is the schedule for group play. All teams will get the chance to play at both ballparks. USA and Cuba will play all night games. The other teams play a mix of day and night. Now let's take a look at each of these teams, starting with the host country, the second ranked USA. Seven recent Major League players are included on Team USA's preliminary roster. Four of them are pitchers. Homer Bailey looks like the best of the three. The 35-year-old right-hander made two starts in 2020 for the Minnesota Twins, and didn't look too bad. The other two are Edwin Jackson, a 37-year-old right-hander who spent 17 years in MLB, and 36-year-old right-hander David Robertson, a 12-year veteran. Not sure how effective those two will be. They did not pitch at all in 2020, because they both looked awful in 2019. Four position players with major league experience are on the roster. Infielder Todd Frazier brings 2021 experience to the team. He played 13 games for the Pittsburgh Pirates before becoming a free agent. The other three we've got catcher Matt Wieters. He's just four hits shy of a thousand career hits. Outfielder Matt Kemp, an all-star just three years ago. In 2020 with the Rockies, he had a 326 on base percentage. Anthony Ghost has experience as an MLB outfielder, but he is now a AAA pitcher. These veteran players will be teamed up with four top 100 MLB prospects. 21-year-old lefty Matthew Liberatore is number 30 on that list. He is a AAA pitcher in the St. Louis Cardinals organization. Number 34 prospect Tristan Casas of the Boston Red Sox organization is a 21-year-old infielder with a 952 OPS in AA. Number 74, Simeon Woods Richardson is a 21-year-old right-handed pitcher with a 237 ERA and four AA starts. And number 93, Jaron Duran, also Red Sox, a 24-year-old who can play second base or outfield, has a 991 OPS in AAA. So, plenty of experience, plenty of youth, too. Hard telling what will happen when you put them together. They should be in good hands, though, led by former Angels manager Mike Sosha. Staying in Group B, let's look at the 10th-ranked Dominican Republic. The biggest names for the Dominican team are hitters Jose Batista and Melky Cabrera. Each one brings 15 years of MLB experience to the team. Cabrera played in the Dominican Winter League just a few months ago. Batista hasn't played anywhere since 2018. A couple relief pitchers with major league experience too. Right-hander Jumbo Diaz pitched a few years in MLB from 2014 to 2017. More recently he's been in the Mexican Summer League. Left-hander Dario Alvarez was in MLB at the same time, and he pitches in the Dominican League every winter. The top young prospect on the Dominican roster is 20-year-old outfielder Julio Rodriguez, ranked 5th out of all MLB prospects. So far this year he holds a 620 slugging in single A of the Seattle Mariners organization. Another outfielder and Mariners prospect is 25-year-old Luis Liberato, who has a 362 on base percentage in AAA. In the infield they've got a more experienced minor leaguer in 29-year-old Adderlin Rodriguez. He's batting 362 in AAA this year after spending last year with the Oryx Buffaloes of NPB. Pitching prospects include 23-year-old lefty Domingo Robles, a St. Louis Cardinals prospect with a 281 ERA in AA, and 24-year-old right-hander Emilio Vargas, another AA pitcher in the White Sox system with a 276 ERA. So this will be an interesting team to watch. Last chance to see a couple good players from the past, and the first chance to see some good ones for the future. The 11th ranked Puerto Rican team on the other hand lacks any big names. No stars of the past and none that look like potential future stars. Not one of them is presently in the Major League system. All have played in the Puerto Rican Winter League. Five ex-Major League position players are on the roster, all with very limited MLB experience. 
Outfielder Noel Cuevas played recently in two seasons for the Colorado Rockies. Then there are four infielders, Ivan De Jesus, Esmoel Valentin, Ray Navarro, and Ozzy Martinez. Only one pitcher with major league experience, 28-year-old right-hander Jason Garcia. He only played one year in MLB for the Orioles, and that was back in 2015. There doesn't appear to be any standout players from the Puerto Rican League either. But that doesn't mean you should count them out. A lot of things can happen when a team full of professional players comes together. But they won't be lifted by a few big names. It'll have to be a real team effort. 15th ranked Nicaragua is the lowest ranked team in the Baseball Americas Olympic qualifier. Unlike most countries, they didn't earn their place by being a part of the 2019 Premier 12. They earned their spot with a bronze medal at the 2019 Pan American Games. There are four players that belong to major league organizations. 24-year-old catcher Melvin Novoa is a Texas Rangers prospect. He's off to a good start this year in AA, reaching base in 10 out of his first 20 plate appearances. And 22-year-old outfielder Ismael Munguia, a San Francisco Giants prospect, is batting 286 in single A. They've got one pitcher from the major league system, 23-year-old lefty Dilmer Mejia of the White Sox organization, and another lefty from the LMB, 34-year-old Carlos Teller but both of them are struggling with high ERAs right now. The rest of their roster is filled with players from the Nicaraguan Winter League, a good professional league, but not on the same level as the Dominican or Puerto Rican leagues, but they definitely look capable of upsetting the highest ranked teams. Don't be too surprised if you see them in the Super Round. Let's go over to Group B, where world number 7 Cuba is the highest ranked team. No major league experience on the roster, but they may actually be bringing the most talented team. Left-handed relief pitcher Levon Moanello has a 0.45 ERA through 20 appearances for the SoftBank Hawks of NPB. Last year it was 169 in 50 appearances. This guy could pitch for any major league team if he were a defector. His teammate in Japan with the Hawks, 34-year-old outfielder Alfredo Despine, will be joining him. He was a best nine selection in 2019 when he hit 36 home runs. Another one they've got coming from NPB is 24-year-old reliever Rydell Martinez. In 17 relief appearances for the Chunichi Dragons, his ERA is 108. The Cuban Winter League supplies the rest of their roster. Lazaro Blanco was the top starting pitcher last year. 10 starts, 201 ERA. 22-year-old infielder Cesar Prieto slashed 403, 463, 579. Catcher Rafael Vinales was right behind him. 387, 469, 659. And outfielder Lisbon Correa just made his LMB debut last week after leading the Cuban League with 28 home runs this past winter. The absence of Major League players more or less evens out the competition between Cuba and the rest, and the players they've got coming back from Japan are better than what anyone is bringing. The real question here is how well players from the Cuban League will perform against players from the other winter leagues. Since Cuba hasn't been included in the last two Caribbean series, we have no means of comparison. One spot below Cuba in the rankings is number 8 Venezuela. The one name you'll recognize is starting pitcher Anibal Sanchez, a 15-year Major League veteran who once led the league in ERA and just played last year for the Washington Nationals. Another one that just played in 2020 is a 10-year Major League veteran, catcher Robinson Chirinos. Infielder Ali Castillo batted 403 in the Venezuelan League last winter and is currently playing in AAA Rochester for the Nationals organization. Two pitchers to keep an eye on, Eric Leal made seven starts in the Venezuelan League, ERA 131. Henry Centeno started 8 games, ERA 204. Both pitchers are 26-year-old right-handers playing in Mexico this summer. So they've got two players with years of Major League experience, one on the mound, one behind the plate, and all the best players from the highly competitive Venezuelan League. Though one of the top baseball playing countries in the world, Venezuela has never qualified for the Olympics. Next up, 13th ranked Canada. Six members of the Canadian roster have appeared in Major League Baseball, all of them pitchers. Andrew Albers, the only lefty among them, spent five years in MLB, then three in NPB. This year he's in AAA. Relief pitcher John Axford had a 10-year MLB career from 2009 to 2018, and once led the league in saves. Scott Matheson pitched in MLB, but is better known for his time with the Yomiuri Giants of NPB. That ended in 2019. The other three pitchers with major league experience are Chris LaRoe, Dustin Mulliken, and Scott Richmond. But among position players, no major league experience. No major prospects either. They're mostly AA, AAA, and independent ball players. If their minor league performances carry over to the Olympic qualifier, they could be in trouble. But one bright spot for their hitting would be outfielder Jacob Robson, a Detroit Tigers AA prospect who's hitting 424, 531, 712 through 18 games this year. 
So Canada will be hoping to get the most out of its aging pitchers and win some low-scoring games. If that doesn't work, they'll need some unlikely heroes to power the offense. The last team we'll look at is Colombia, a rising country in the baseball world. Four years ago, they not only qualified for the WBC, but did some damage when they got there. The past two years, they've sent a team to the Caribbean Series. There are more Colombians in Major League Baseball and the Major League system than there's ever been before. And it shows with the team they're bringing. Twelve players on Colombia's roster belong to Major League organizations. And the one that everyone will be watching is Jeter Downs, the number 39 prospect in MLB from the Red Sox organization. He can play second base and shortstop. Right now he's in AAA where he's got a 351 on base percentage and 7 steals in 18 games. He is one of many young minor leaguers on their roster. Their best pitching prospect looks to be 25-year-old lefty Raver San Martin of the Reds organization. He's made three starts in AA with a 0.50 ERA. While 23-year-old catcher Andres Agulo is batting 308 in AA for the Giants. There are two former major leaguers, pitchers Johan Pino and Sugar Ray Maramon, but they haven't been in MLB for a long time. So they're mostly young players looking to make a name for themselves and their country. No better time and place to do that. And there you have it, the eight teams of the Baseball America's Olympic Qualifier. Of course, I won't end the video without telling you how I think it'll turn out. In Group A, I'm going with Dominican Republic and USA to advance to the Super Round. Seems like the obvious choice. Puerto Rico's roster is really not impressive. Talent-wise, they don't match up. Neither does Nicaragua. They're just not on the same level. In Group B, Cuba is my first choice. They usually perform well in international competition anyway, and this time they're playing close to home and they're bringing a team with more talent than the other three. As for the rest of the group, I think it's going to be the young players, not the old ones, that make the difference. And for that reason, I'm choosing Colombia to upset Venezuela and Canada and move on to the Super Round. In the Super Round, their underdog story will end as they're overwhelmed by the three traditional baseball powers. Cuba finishes first and punches their ticket to the Tokyo Games. Dominican Republic and USA get a second chance in the final Olympic qualifier in just a few weeks. That's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. That's all for this one, and until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya!